What do you think of Nikki Haley? Did you ever consider her? What I got to say, you don't really want to put it on. Uh, Let me hear it. Well, the woman's not going to be a good president. She have no balls to scratch. She's just going to scratch her head. All the woman's good for in my book is uh, having babies and taking care uh, of the house. and, and uh, But that's that's the old thing, you know. Uh, but I'm old school. So you never even considered her? No. Beca no. Mainly because she's a woman? Because she's female. I mean, females, don't tell me wrong, females know what they're doing, but they still got to have a little bit of guidance. Female political candidates, they ain't got balls to scratch. And that's apparently a problem for some Republican voters. Now, you just watched a North Carolina Trump voter tell NBC News specifically that he would never consider voting for a woman for president, but he's not the only one. In fact, this morning, Fox News's Will Kane talked to a voter in the state of Texas. He asked, her, this is a woman he's talking to, what she thought of the news that Michelle Obama will not be running for president. And you can tell Kane was not at all prepared for the way the voter responded. Let's watch. I remember her last name because who forgets a last name that is Tax? But I don't remember your first name. Paula Tax. So NBC just reported that Michelle Obama has said she will not run for president. Thank God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Ainsley said, I would love the reaction from from a woman in the crowd. And, and I wouldn't vote for a woman. And especially, you know, Nikki Haley, I'm just going to say this. She's probably menopausal. We don't need that. I mean, look, I don't know for sure. I don't know what that woman's age was. It's very likely she has gone through menopause or is experiencing it. Like, how is that a point to dissuade people <laughs> from supporting someone? What does menopause have anything to do with it? We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Now look, let's keep it real. There is a brand of old school that believes that women can't handle significant jobs. So that shouldn't be news to anyone. What's amazing is that they still live among us. So that old school didn't fully go away. So some of the old school folks now at this point, I think Overwhelmingly right wing, not exclusively right wing, but overwhelmingly. So I remember a guy that I talked to in 2016, truck driver, um, and uh, and I asked him who he was voting for. It turns out he's a Democrat. I'm like, oh, that's good, okay. And it turns out he was a Bernie Sanders voter. I was like, oh, excellent, that's that's neat. I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, and he explained a couple of good reasons why, and he hated Trump. And he's like, that that guy's a rich, you know, mm -hmm. sob. Let's put it that way. And I, all he's going to do is take our money. And he was right about that. So so far so good. And I, and then he said, and plus Hillary Clinton's a chick. I'm not going to vote for a chick. Oh and I was like, what? There's so, so many. Like she was such a target rich environment uh -huh. without even having to touch on her sex. You could have just touched on so many other things. But like, yeah, taking the money yeah. from the banks, legitimate points. Yeah. But so, but my part of my point here is, guys. That you see like a sanitized view of the world on television and in media. Because if you're an anchor that says, well, of course I'm not gonna vote for a woman, she doesn't have testicles. No balls to scratch. Yeah, you're largely gonna get fired, although at Fox <laughs> News and Newsmax, maybe not, right? But but so those guys get washed out, which is good. You don't want that kind of madness, right? Yeah. Um, but in the real world, they're still around. And there's a lot of people who think that women should never be in a position of leadership, let alone some people who think that they women shouldn't even work, right? So guys, the reality is us men have been running the world for as far back as we can remember. And how are we doing so far? Not that great. All we've done is led to wars and wars and wars, endless conflicts and testosterone filled wars. I say let the women have a shot. They, first I of all, mean, they can't even look, do worse than us. I don't look. I don't really think, uh, you know, the sex of the individual really matters. I mean, as you talk about wars, I can't help but think of Hillary Clinton, Condoleezza Rice. There are plenty of women who would be hawkish and awful on foreign policy. But they're promoted by the guys who want wars. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? They didn't get picked out of a hat. They got mm -hmm. picked out because they were pro-war, pro-corporate. 
yeah, and, and this awful mm -hmm. system. No, and don't get me wrong, overall, should you only pick women to be leaders? Of course pick not. the best possible candidate not. that actually, of and listen to what they say as they're campaigning. Like that's the thing that really stands out to me about certain elections. Uh, obviously in presidential elections, we watch debates, Cenk. Like they don't really get into the nitty gritty of how they plan to accomplish these big ideas that they claim to want to accomplish. And then, you know, just recently I was watching the California Senate debate uh, to fill uh, the late Dianne Feinstein's uh, Senate seat in California. That debate was awful. It was one of the worst debates I've ever seen. No one said anything of substance, really. And Katie Porter did. Katie Porter did. Katie Porter actually seemed the most prepared and she hit on corruption a lot in that debate. But everyone else gave like really vague answers. They weren't really saying anything of substance. You have men on that stage, you have women on that stage. Didn't matter. There was a problem in that they just seemed to feel entitled to this incredibly important position of power without thinking through how they want to fix some of the major issues that we're experiencing in the state. It's just, yeah, yeah it really bothers me. Look, if, of course you should pick based on the person, considering their gender is absurd. Uh, but I, I, but I'm not going to back away from the statement that men have led to disaster as leaders. Uh, so they've also done amazing things, of course, right? But overall, if you think men are demonstrably better at being leaders than women, that position is not supported by the facts, not even close. Like maybe you could make the counter argument, but you cannot make the argument that men are better at leadership, given our awful track record so far on this planet. Uh, so I mean, of the wars that were started, 98% of them were started by men. Well, they're uh, the only ones for a long time uh, that had the ability to even get a position of power. Yeah, and by the way, how did they get that? Through violence, right? Uh, in the old days, the reason women didn't have any uh, power was because men would just simply beat them. Okay, so <laughs> there's, I mean, the abuse that men have done to women throughout human history is untold. But here we are in the year 2024, and there are guys still walking around, and women still walking around going, you can't trust women. Like if they said I, it about guys, I would say, I would defend guys and say, no, 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 you're being super unfair. A couple of bad guys at the top or a lot of bad guys at the top doesn't mean all guys are bad. That's crazy, right? But when you say it about women, it is indefensible in every imaginable way. Listen, I 1 million percent disagree with the statements that were made by the two individuals that we heard, okay? I don't agree with them. I think that women are capable of being incredible leaders. I think men are capable of being incredible leaders. One of my favorite politicians happens to be a man and his name is Bernie Sanders. So it really depends on the person. I don't really think gender or sex is indicative of how someone is likely to lead the country. But I do wanna end on a positive note, Jenk, because I wanna take note of the progress that we've made as a country in regard to how Americans and most voters view women when it comes to these leadership roles and these positions of power. So first, let's break things down and look at more recent polling and where the temperature is among voters on female candidates. So. There's a survey from 2019 done by YouGov and The Economist and it asked, if you honestly assessed yourself, how comfortable are you with a woman president of the United States? And the results were as follows, 51% said that they were entirely comfortable, okay? 15% said that they were somewhat comfortable, 10% say somewhat uncomfortable, 11% say entirely uncomfortable. So according to that 2019 YouGov poll, 11% are, you know, entirely uncomfortable. So in other words, 66% of the country are at least entirely or somewhat comfortable and only 21% entirely or somewhat uncomfortable. That's good news. That's good news when you That's compare what the numbers news. used to be. Because the numbers used to be really, really. You want to be negative today, Jenk? You're the one who wants to be <laughs> negative today? I mean, go ahead. I'm trying to look at the bright side. We've made some progress. We've got some, some yeah. ways to go, but I believe in us. And of all days to be speak against male leaders, this is the day on Super Tuesday that I'm choosing to do that. Yeah. Anyways, but look guys, yes, it's encouraging that those numbers have moved in the right direction in a massive way. Well, let me tell you how much. Okay, go ahead. All right, so let's go to the uh, graphic three here. So um, in January of 1937, the Gallup poll then in its second year of existence posed this question. Would you vote for a woman for president if she was qualified in every other respect? 64% of Americans said no, Jenk. They said no. 
Only 33% said yes and 3% had no opinion on the matter. So I choose to focus on the progress. I think that there's again, still room for improvement. But I look, we have proven ourselves as a people, as the American people <laughs> that we are capable of progress. And I think we're gonna continue heading in that direction. Well, I love your optimism on this one. and uh, But I will say only 51% of the country saying that they're entirely comfortable with a woman leading is still not a great number. We got a lot of work left ahead of us to educate folks about the reality of of the human species. And that of course we're equal, of course. God, when they miss the point of the country and our founding documents, it drives me crazy. It's supposed to be equality and justice for all.